and I will invite Nicolas de France to talk to us. He's also a marine biologist, yes, a, a researcher at the University of Oslo, and he works in the Department of Geoscience, of Bioscience, I'm sorry. Um, too used to say geoscience. Yeah. Uh, so, and he will talk about fishes in the Arctic and the, use the example of polar cod. So, Nicolas, please. Uh, thank you. I have the last presentation of the of this evening. Yeah, so this is um, I'm Nicola, and I we have been moving from the very tiny stuff to the big, bigger stuff, and now we are going to the larger stuff, which are the fishes in the Arctic. And I'm going to especially focus on uh, polar cod. Speaking of larger stuff, I have uh, just uh, introduction question: Is everything bigger in the Arctic? You can see here when we're speaking about copepods, uh, we have the uh, Atlantic species, more like warmer species, the Calanus pimashicus, which is about one millimeter long. And if you go up to Arctic species, you can see that the Calanus hyperboreus uh, is way larger, over two millimeters long. If you consider polar bears, polar bears from Norway, uh, Norwegian forest are purple brown bears and, uh, and other European bears, and pull, um, about 400 kilos at max for a male, whereas the polar bear can, a male can be over, um, yeah, almost 600 kilos for the largest. <coughs> if we look at eggs of fish, you have the Atlantic species, Atlantic cod egg, which is about one, one millimeter uh, wide, and the Arctic, of, Arctic cod egg which is larger, almost two meter wide. But is it the case actually for the fishes? And when we look at the size of fishes, we can see that actually polar cod at three years old is three times smaller than a normal uh, cod. So what's a polar cod? You are going to see a little video from the University of Tromsø, what they have in their uh, laboratory. It's loading. Yes. Those are polar cod uh, swimming in the tanks at the University of Tromsø. As every, almost as we see the phytoplanktons and copepods, polar cod are important killing in the food chain of the Arctic, uh, where, where seals, seabirds, and, and other fishes are feeding on this particular species because it's really abundant. It's found, oh, oops, sorry. It's from all over uh, the Arctic, and uh, for this highest one has been recorded in the Barents Sea, it was about two million tons of fish in the in the Barents Sea, just in the Barents Sea. So imagine for the whole of the Arctic Ocean. I was talking a bit uh, about eggs. Um, so this is a map of the Barents Sea, and in the Barents Sea, the polar cod is spawning uh, on the east of Svalbard. And here on the south of Novaya Zemlya, near Russia. The eggs are spawned between uh, November and March during the polar uh, night, and they are spawned near or under the, the sea ice. And here the sea ice has an important role because it's um, the egg of Polakot is quite large, but it's also quite fragile, so it can easily tear apart because of water turbulence. And the sea ice is going to act as a lock over uh, the water to protect the eggs. As well, um, when the eggs are still present after uh, being spawned in during the um, polar day, the sea ice is going to protect them from uh, light and UV radiation that could uh, harm them. Then when you are egg, and then uh, you have out of the egg comes a little larvae, which is about some millimeter long, and they appear in the Barents Sea between, oops, between March and September. And when these larvae appears, for example, there are uh, different fates. Uh, larvae that are born early during the season um, have some luck because they are under the sea ice. So they are protected for potential predators 
as seabirds, which cannot go and get them. But at the same time, it's quite dark. There is not so much praise. Their praise are the um, calams that we saw, but the copepods that we saw before, and there are is. So it's a bit more difficult time of the year for a polaca to be born early in the season. When you are mid in the season, then the sea ice starts to break up. There is some lights. The polacot can see its prey better, and there is more prey uh, as the productive season starts. At the end of the season, it's a bit more unlikely starts because the prey has been going down and you are at the end of the productive season. And how is that important? Because uh, what's coming in the um, Arctic is after is the first winter. When the first winter is coming, light uh, starts to decrease, so it's more difficult for the larvae during the first winter to find uh, food. And the food also, uh, the amount of food decrease in the uh, in the ocean. And what's important for the larvae is to accumulate enough fat during uh, the uh, summer, just to can survive uh, the low food levels in the in winter. So if you are born early in the uh, season, you have a, bit, a difficult, more difficult start because there is less uh, less food and uh, and less light. But if you survive, you have a very long time to grow, to eat a lot and grow fat. Compared to um, larvae that are born uh, in a bit more lucky time during, some, uh, during summer where there is more light and more food, but they have a shorter time to accumulate a lot of uh, fat. Which means that larvae that are born early during the season are larger at winter and have more chance to survive winter than larvae that are born during summer and later during the season. Then, if, you, if the larvae is surviving the first winter, then it becomes a juvenile and is going to mature. A mature fish is about two years old and can have a life expectancy of four years old. And then, during, oops, during winter, the, um, the fish is going to go down at uh, depths to overwinter. Going down at depths, it's the behavior of the fish to escape predator. You are deep, it's dark, it's cold. It's not a very good place for predator to go and, uh, and fish. And in this, it's so cold that actually the uh, water is below zero degrees, so below freezing points. But Poracot doesn't has evolved a special uh, protein, which permits uh, that block the, uh, its blood to uh, froze under, uh, when it's under uh, freezing condition. So they have like antifreeze proteins in their blood, such as the blood does not uh, freeze when it's below uh, freezing temperature in the in the water. Um, after uh, when uh, the, the when the uh, um, day comes back, they go back up uh, to the uh, surface to uh, to feed. Feed on, and then they are can be more exposed to the all the different predators that can be found in the Arctic, which depends on polar that's seabirds, seals, whales uh, like the, the beluga, and other fish predators such as the Atlantic cod. And when they are mature, um, they are going to stay uh, under the surface to lay the eggs uh, under the sea ice. So why uh, why do we study Paracot? Obviously, it's an important uh, link in the food chain of the Arctic. But there is still a lot of unknown about the Paracot. Um, in, uh, with, in cooperation with Russia, Norway estimates the stocks of fish in the Barents Sea in September. So we just have an idea where the fish is found during the autumn. But we don't know where does the fish go in spring, where does it go in summer. Does it stay the Barents Sea? Does it go to other sea near the Barents Sea? And how this or the seas eventually contributes to the stock of polar inside the Barents Sea? Um, we still don't know how important is sea ice for polar I spoke about sea ice, how it can protect the, uh, the egg, but how would polar uh, do if there is less sea ice? Is still a, a, a natural question. And with sea ice, how will climate change affect Polacot. And so these are the challenges of Polacot. Uh, with the climate change is the decrease of sea ice, 
as well when it gets warmer in the weather, some species, more louse, are going up in the north, such as, such as Atlantic cod, which is a predator, so they have more predations, and as well as there is a decrease of their Arctic waves. And when we were speaking about pollutions, uh, oil or the um, active, um, human activities in the Barents Sea, such as research for um, looking out for for oil, could be uh, could affect if there is an oil spill, could affect the larvae of polar cod because it would um, modify their ability to feed, and then if they modify the ability to feed of larvae, then it has an impact during the first winter when the larvae needs to be to get to eat a lot during uh, during summer, and then affect their survivability during winter. Thank you very much to uh, listening. Mm -hmm.